I'm Matt Dillahunty, joining me this week, Don Baker. Welcome. Well, good to be here. And uh, this is a live public access television program sponsored by the Atheist Community of Austin. You can find out more information about the ACA by visiting the website www.atheist-community.org. There you'll find a frequently asked questions page, uh, a calendar of events. All right, we've got, um, oh, we caller changed, I guess. Is this Jacob in Louisiana? Hey, um, Matt. Hey. Um, I was wondering, uh, what do you what do you think of the Cambrian explosion, and if you have any um, really valid explanations for it? I'm not a biologist or an evolutionary biologist, so your best bet is to talk to them, and you can get good explanations from real evolutionary biologists who've put this information online by going to Talk Origins. Okay. Is is there some sort of controversy there? Well. Uh, I was wondering if you, if you, uh, I mean, like all of the species on Earth just like pretty much uh, showed up in, during the Cambrian explosion, and uh, which is kind of contrary. No, to not evolution. really. <laughs> it, that's not that's not really what the Cambrian explosion is. It's not like species magically appeared. It's this was an, an increase, a rapid increase in diversity of life. Yeah, but it happened too quickly for it to be caused by evolution, right? How do you know that? No, nobody thinks that, or nobody, nobody who's a serious yeah. biologist or paleontologist thinks that. I mean, you're looking, was, at, you're looking at quick, and you're saying quick in the, in the form of millions and hundreds of millions of years, uh, but I, I'm not aware of any biologist who thinks that it's too quick, but let's presume for a second that the current models of evolution were somehow uh, contradicted, or that we didn't have a good explanation for the for the Cambrian explosion. I, I, I think that we do. I'm just not the person who's going to be sitting here to represent the details of science on on a show like this. But let's let's presume for a moment that we didn't. So what? The answer at that point is I don't know. And if you if you look into this from any number of other arenas, including, for example, we've talked about before, Francis Collins, who's an evangelical Christian and the head of the NIH, who has, is quoted as saying that the DNA evidence alone supports not only evolution, but common ancestry, even if we had no fossil record at all. So this idea that something, we, you, that we've found something that happened too fast for evolution is not only false, but all it would do, if, if it were true, is reform the current model so that we had a better explanation of these things. Okay, well, you said that, um, that, you know, that everything ha is related through DNA, right? Yes. Well, that would make sense if, it, if they all came from the same creator, right? <laughs> um, there must be a God. Maybe, then. I don't know. <laughs> um, I, I suppose that if there is a creator God, it's possible that everything would be related through DNA, and it's also possible that it wouldn't. Are you saying that a God creator would be incapable of having disparate genetic codes? No, but okay, it, so if you're not it shows pigeon, that it comes from the same source, right? Sure, but you can't slap your God in as the source. There's no justification for slapping a God in. That's, that's the God of the gaps argument, and and, and that's, we don't have an explanation for X, and therefore I'm going to stick a God in there. Well, you know what's happened every single time we've stuck God in a gap and then continued to investigate? We found out the real explanation, and God was then removed from that gap and stuck into other gaps. And so you actually have to come up with evidence to support your hypothesis that, that there is a God required and a God responsible for the, for the origins of life. Um, you can't just assert it. Because the thing is, the God explanation, first of all, it's not an explanation, because it doesn't explain anything. We explain things in terms of things that we understand. What it is, is it's, you can't solve a mystery by appealing to another mystery. And so when you say, we don't know the answer to this, therefore God, you're, you should have just stopped at, we don't know the answer to this, because you haven't added anything to the discussion by positing a God. Okay, but I'm not, it's not a God of the gaps argument, because I'm, I'm not, I'm not, putting evidence in a gap. I'm saying, you know, uh, it's a you gap know all DNA, knowledge. all all living organisms have similar DNA, which means that they have, you know, they have a common ancestry, a, a common source, but the but the Cambrian explosion shows that they couldn't have evolved quick enough to No, it doesn't. Only creationists think that. 
Okay. <laughs> there are and they don't have a, they're, they're ignoring the evidence to the contrary. There are biologists who've already answered this over and over again, but I'm not going to get into a big... Stephen Jay Gold has answered this at, at length. Yeah, and I, you know, it's one of those things where um, I wish P.Z. Myers would sit in on the show more often uh, so that he could just answer this and toss it away. But the answer is out there on Talk Origins, and I'm not just going to keep going over it with a, you're saying that it's impossible and I'm saying that it's not because we get nowhere. What I've done is I've actually been as conciliatory as possible and said that even if you were right it doesn't prove that your God exists okay well I have uh, another question for you if you don't mind okay uh, what um, I'll just ask it now I'll, I'll let you answer I'll get off okay um, what proof and evidence do you have that atheism is accurate and correct I wish you wouldn't get off I wish you'd stay okay because um, there's this moron on on YouTube uh, who, who keeps asking this question and pretending like we haven't answered it. Not only have I answered it on the show before, but on the blog as well. The question is ill-formed. Um, the, the, the question is, what proof and evidence do you have that atheism is true? Well, atheism is the position of not accepting the theological explanation. It is not accepting the God hypothesis. It is, in fact, the null hypothesis. It cannot be proven to be true. It is the default position. And Christianity and Buddhism and Hinduism and Islam, they have all failed to meet their burden of proof. It's not up to me to prove that there are no gods any more than it's up to me to prove that there isn't Bigfoot or fairies or UFOs. The default position, the null hypothesis, is that these things aren't true. And we wait and reserve belief until they are demonstrated to be true. Does that make sense? Yeah, that makes sense, I guess, but cool. does that mean that atheism is not a worldview? That's correct. Atheism isn't a worldview. It doesn't have any tenets or dogma, no books, no authorities. It is a single position on a single question, the existence of gods. Now, there, are, there is a worldview that many atheists share. Most of us, um, at least with the ACA, are skeptics. That informs our worldview. It's My atheism is a direct product of skepticism. Um, many of us are secular humanists, which tell us a little bit more about perhaps our moral outlook on life and other things. There's many, many labels that would fit, and there are a number of secular worldviews um, that are consistent with atheism. But just saying you're an atheist alone doesn't tell you anything at all about somebody's worldview. By the way, most Buddhists are atheists. They don't believe in a god, but they believe in any number of, in some cases, supernatural things that I don't accept. Some of them don't accept that either. So yeah, atheism is not a worldview. It can certainly be a part of a worldview, but it's not a, a worldview in that broad sense. Okay, well, thanks for your time and everything. Sure, thanks, Jacob. Tell Shaka I said hi. <laughs> <coughs>